15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12. America's Apollo space program through the 1960s and 70s and its manned missions to the moon were the very frontier of science and technology of the day. The program's Earth launch vehicle, the Saturn V rocket, was an incredible feat of engineering scientific technology, standing some 350 feet high that is over 35 stories tall and weighing more than 500 tons, it was a monstrous piece of ingenuity and hardware that was specifically designed to send men hurtling through deep space, destined for Earth's nearest stellar object, the Moon. The mission logistics of the Apollo space program which ran into billions of dollars from the Americans' federal budget are simply staggering, especially the daring dynamics of the 1969 moon landings, and mission ostensibly to land men and space vehicle on the lunar surface, safely transport and return the men back to Earth. Developed purposefully for this task and project was the gargantuan Saturn V rocket, and powerful Earth launch vehicle. From an Earth-based launch the three-stage rocket arrangement was to jettison its first stage rocket boosters beyond Earth's orbit, then journey onwards for more than a quarter of a million miles to the Moon as a second and third stage space rocket vehicle, on an satisfactory approach to the lunar body. The lander and the lame were to detach and descend safely and softly on rocket thrusters to place the men and the lander squarely on the surface of the moon. Almost three quarters of a million miles rocketed to the moon and back where the men and crew of Apollo 11, but with no more room in the crew's quarters in weightlessness space for the men to stretch than in an automobile. This mission's dynamics was to simply deliver men to the moon and return them to Earth safely. There was no other scientific rationale involved whatsoever for this, and this was to be done with a soft landing on the lunar surface on reverse thrust rockets. Many previous moon missions by the Americans and the Soviets had sent orbiting satellites and surveyors, cameras and lunar impactors relaying rock soil geological samples and information along with complete mapping of the lunar surface this including the dark side of the moon and view of the moon that was unforeseen and unknown to science at the time. But by 1969 there was very little that wasn't understood of Earth's satellite the moon for the previous moon missions and there was as much understood by the way of the experience gained through long distance interstellar space travel and flight. The Apollo space program's mission was to solely transport men to the lunar surface and return them back to Earth to simply claim the prize as the first living beings to have ever set foot on another planet rather than the tried and tested but the safe and preferred method of unmanned lunar landers, remotely controlled observation techniques or mechanical surveying investigative space vehicles. The LAME and the lunar module delivered on the Saturn V rocket were to land safely and successfully on the moon's surface following a satisfactory detachment from the lunar orbiter which awaited the men's return for redocking as it spun around the astronauts' heads at a dizzying speed orbiting Earth's nearest celestial body and its partner, the moon. After safely landing on the moon and on a successful completion of a specific set of scientific and explorative investigations carried out by the men, the brave crew of Apollo 11 were to rocket jettison once more off the moon's surface to join and successfully redock in near moon orbit the circling lunar orbiter, that was Apollo 11's floating fuel tank and the only opportunity for the victorious ride a quarter of a million miles back to their mother planet called Earth. It's the stuff of fiction or fantasy you may say it's so incredible when you consider the logistics mission dynamics and the very obvious dangers to the men and crew of the Apollo moon landing missions that it just can't be true but the struggle to venture further and further into deeper space to claim its prize by the world's superpowers had been raging on for years and years. Ballistic missile technologies and nuclear armed superpowers went head to head in this battle for space supremacy, the battle for the capture of the territory of space and the collective will of the people through the submissive consciousness of an one and singular humanity, united in his conquest of space. 
Such is the law of men on the moon that it was the hearts and minds and soul of man to be one in this mission not the lifeless satellite of earth the moon whose territory had no value to be gained for its immeasurable distance and its grey and unforgiving terror firma. For as Armstrong Apollo 11's captain chief navigator and commander of the mission stepped from the lane to pronounce the name of humanity, the world was to witness for the first time through the eye of the medium of television an incredible spectacle of live broadcasts from the surface of the moon something they'd certainly never ever seen on television before. But long before the glorified and televised spectacle of America's Apollo space program and its manned missions to the moon men had ventured to the distant body of the moon to safely return. They are men just as brave as Apollo 11's and crew just as bold and courageous to its the space program of the Soviets not in public relations exercise or a media inspired event but an proven and scientific exploration of stellar space with an impeccable history of unparalleled technological success. It's an history of manned lunar orbits and safe manned returns, crash-landed impactors, orbiting surveyors, remotely controlled soft lunar landings and even automated lunar rovers yet the Soviets they never ever once opted to land and man. It had all been done before save for the man on the moon and his ABC television crew but its success was to serve as the dress rehearsal for the very public exhibition of the televised 1969 Apollo 11 moon landings. We should never forget the first pioneers and heroes of early space flight no matter whom they served with, with medals of bravery and badges for honor and with the certificates of distinction as these men were truly the first mariner spacefarers the bold brave men who went to the moon and beyond, because behind this gaze and glare of the westernized world view of publicity the genius of Soviet space science had worked quietly but cautiously with an extreme sense of efficiency, though this was done somewhat in the background as the Soviets were without ABC's news facilities, However they had still successfully claimed all the first prizes of the great space race, first Earth orbiting satellite launched into space, hero Yuri Gagarin was the first man in space and also with an first successful Earth orbit, with the first woman in space to soon liberally but of course democratically follow, the first unmanned lunar orbiter, the first permanently placed lunar surveillance satellite. The first pictures ever taken or publicly displayed of the moon's dark side, and the first impactor to be crash-landed safely on the lunar surface, as well as the first rover to fully explore the lunar territory, and the furthest traveled lunar rover too. Most importantly was the Soviet space program's first manned lunar orbiter and unsafe Earth return from the moon for its men and crew and this long before Armstrong and Aldrin's much heralded and applauded Apollo 11's live televised moon mission landing media event. But it wouldn't be true to say none of this had came without great sacrifice and many had lost their lives to stellar space exploration and missions and this on both sides of the political and ideological divide, brave men and women, ground crew test pilots, astronauts, scientists, engineers, technicians and aerospace employees, insignificant individuals as compared to the bold mariner spacefarers to survive the mission of deep stellar space flight should all not be rightly remembered and justly rewarded as heroic in their deed, because they'd have gave their lives for man's conquest of interstellar space. Apollo 11 and the 1969 moon landings have never been rivaled to this day and it's often questioned why men have never ever returned to set foot once more on the lunar soil, perhaps it's just too difficult and costly. Indeed it's just too dangerous but to some it's deemed utterly insane impossible to safely return men to the moon, that being the case then isn't it in the destiny of mankind to surely conquer all that should stand before him to make an heroic return to the moon, as the habitat planet earth is more perilously closer than ever before to mortal danger, with overpopulation depleting natural resources, climatic chaos, drought famine pestilence disease and the ever-present threat of war, 
This should remind us that we may yet still have to be all the more thankful for the brave endeavor of the heroic Mariner spacefarers who have graciously paved the way for habitation that's beyond this place, our mother planet, and the planet we call Earth.